All right, so we're going to try and learn more about how this uh, ransomware attack happened. So we're going to do um, we 80105 desk. First, we're going to get all the Suricata events on the day, 24 August. All right, so let's go back here. And uh, I'm going to first turn the event sampling way up. There's no need for a lot of them. Get rid of the source type. Okay, first I want Suricata events, and then I want to restrict it to a certain day. So let's go to, well, uh, all right. I guess I filtered too much. Oh, no, I know what's going on. There's a very restricted time range. I need to clear the old time range. So let's go to um, presets all time. Okay, because so I was, previously I was querying just one second. Okay, now I'm back to all of it and sampling one in 100. Okay. Now I should be able to find various types of events. And here's Suricata. Okay, now I want to restrict it to a certain date, uh, which was on that day, 24 August, 2016. Okay. Um, All right, I got date range. Twenty four, twenty sixteen, twenty five, twenty sixteen. That might be it. I don't know if that's going to give me one day or two, but that'll be close to what I want. Let's try that. Zero events. 624.16 to 626.16. Uh, let's see. Wait, 624, 824. Oh, that's my problem. Okay. 824. And it looks like I better just put 824 here too, looking at what it did to that. Yeah, now it's going 624 to 626. Wait, it's still doing the same thing. All right, what's the story here? Um, let's go back to all time. All right, I'm going to go to a date and time range. I've had it with this nonsense. 824, 2016. Okay. At 12. All right. All right, and I want to start at zero and say I'll give it, you know, just zero there. And 824. And I'll make it 2359. 59. There, that would be pretty much all day. All right. See how that works. Well, now I got a reasonable number of events. 824 at the beginning of the day. All right. To the end, PM, AM to PM. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see what they expected me to have. There are 86,000 of them. Oh, well, I must have sampling on. Turn off the sampling. All right, 86,579. Oh, good, I found them all. Now I look at source IP and uh, restrict it to the source of that web 80, we 8105 desk. So go to source IP. Okay, and I saved that IP address earlier. It was 192 ending in 100, this one here, okay. So now I've got the events that come from the uh, laptop of interest, the, the workstation. There's still 24,000 of them. Now look at event type and get the query that loads web pages. 
Okay, event type. That would be HTTP. To load a web page. Now I'm down to 38. Now look at the host names visited and figure out which one is malicious. So let's see if we can find host name, HTTP host name. There are a total of 10 of them and here they are. And you can see these are Microsoft and Windows and Bing and Acronis, those are harmless. This one you don't know, but this one here I think is obviously the malicious one. And you, I think I even saw it before in that list of ones being used on the server. Um, investigate them with Google. So I think if we just Google this one, we're gonna find that it is a malicious domain name. Google. Yep, anatomy of a ransomware attack, server uses it. The JPEG image is downloaded from here. So, you know, pretty obvious. Here's checkpoint telling you that's used for server ransomware. So that's obviously the malicious domain used in this attack. Now, another one is, this one here to find the VB script, which I was very impressed to see this in Splunk. You can actually get the entire script used to perform the ransomware attack, which is pretty awesome. So you just search for events with the VB script and an EXE because it launched with an EXE and then uh, also had the script in the same line. So all I need is VBS and EXE. So let's go back to here, get rid of all that and just look for .vbs and .exe. Oh, and get back to all time. All right. All right, there are 16 of them. Um, that's correct. Go look at the body field and find the malicious one. Okay, a new process has been created. And uh, here's another standard message about a new process has been created. Those all look like just default messages. Oh, look at this stuff. This is obfuscated VBS script with uppercase and lowercase and stupid meaningful. This is obviously the malicious script right there. Um, all right. So what is the name of the first function defined in the VBS script? And you can just see it here, random for this, there's a function name to find in the beginning of it. So you can hand read it right off of there. Now I wanna find the field link, the entire script is here. So find the length of the Splunk field, not the length of the script itself. So you wanna examine this process, this, this event. We have the one event we want and uh, I didn't find it that way. Let me go back. I probably can't search for something that big and messy. Uh, let's just search for a string that finds it, like um, I bet random, not VBS. Let's just try adding random. That'll probably do it. Now there are three. Well, that's annoying. Here's the first one, random.vbs. And here's more, oh, that also have similar uh, issues. All right, now, um, the entire script can be found in a field in Splunk. This one here, as I remember, was kind of difficult. Ah, and Splunk took away this help page. That's annoying, all right. I think we have to use pipe to count the length of it. Let's see if we can find the field that includes the script. There's definitely a script in there. And if I just expand all the details, I can see the fields here. So that's the command line. Um, there's hashes. There's the parent command line that includes the script plus other things. And we see if I have any tips how to do this. Okay, to find the event of interest. Uh, here we go. Um, all right, so there's a thing called parent command line. And that's it here. The parent command line you see concludes the executable. So what you want 
let's find the MD5. Okay, the GI1, this is the correct event. The one with this MD5. Okay, so I found the right event. And I might as well just click on this to get just that one event, add to search. All right, that's the event. And to get the flag they want, you have to use a query to evaluate the length of the parent command line. So I'm just going to put it here. This is what should have been in that help page, which has vanished. Um, that's how you do it. You evaluate length equals length of the parent command line field. That's a way to get the length of that field. And so then you will get uh, an answer there, presumably. Evaluate length. There. There's the length. All right. That's one way to get it. Anyway, I was very pleased to see that you can see the actual script that was used to perform the encryption. All right. And we got some more things to do, but I'll do those in a separate video.